Before we get into the video, we'd just like to mention that we're doing an entire series on the Normal Boots YouTube channel discussing what the best Generation 1 Pokemon is. Click the link in the top right corner or description to check it out. Did you know? Red, the main playable character from the first generation of Pokemon games, was originally known as Satoshi in Japan. However, this wasn't the character's first name. Thanks to the Pokemon fan site HelixChamber.com, information from prototypes of the original Pokemon games have been published. This includes graphics and a name for the game's playable character, Yuichi. Multiple sprites for Yuichi have been found, including his intro animation from full to overworld sprite. Interestingly, Yuichi's full sprite depicts them with a whip, similar to the Team Rocket members in the original games. The prototype data also reveals a previously unseen early back sprite for Red. As a quick aside, there's also unused sprites for Red in the Fire Red and Leaf Green remakes. The player was originally intended to ride a Lapras during their surfing animation, instead of the simple blob the player rides in the final game. In the final build of the Japanese game, the character was implied to be named Satoshi. This was an homage to Satoshi Tajiri, the creator of the Pokemon franchise and co-founder of Game Freak. This is also reflected in the Japanese versions of the original games, which include the name Satoshi among the default player names. Similarly, the protagonist of the anime series was also named Satoshi in Japan, but was renamed Ash Ketchum overseas. Satoshi was subsequently localized as Ash in the names list by the time Pokemon Red and Blue reached Western shores. Despite their similarities, Red and Ash Ketchum are not the same character. While there is early concept art of Ash wearing a hat very similar to Red's, this was ultimately changed in Ash's final design, and the two would continue to drift further apart in the following years. One especially noteworthy difference between them is that unlike Ash, Red has visibly aged over his appearances in the video games, most notably being portrayed as an adult in Pokemon Sun and Moon. This version of Red has its own little easter egg as well. Red's shirt in Sun and Moon reads 96, which is likely a reference to 1996, the year that Pokemon Red and Green first released in Japan. The character wouldn't be officially named Red until the release of Pokemon Gold and Silver in 1999, where players could fight Red in a climactic final battle at the peak of Mount Silver. This battle holds a number of distinctions, such as being one of the highest leveled trainer battles throughout the entire series. This is especially true in the the Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver remakes. In fact, Red's level 88 Pikachu is the highest level Pokemon owned by an NPC that a player can normally face in mainline Pokemon games. Another interesting fact is that each member of Red's Pokemon team, consisting of Pikachu, Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, Snorlax, and either Espeon in the second generation games or Lapras in the remakes, reflects a part of Red's journey through Pokemon Yellow. The connection with Yellow is further supported by the fact that Red's sprite in Pokemon Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal is a mirrored and slightly altered version of his sprite in Yellow. Furthermore, the Snorlax that originally blocked Route 16 in the first generation games is missing entirely from the second gen titles and their remakes. This has led some fans to speculate that Red captured this missing Snorlax, explaining its appearance on his team. Meanwhile, although Espeon obviously can't be obtained in the original games, a Pokeball containing Espeon's pre-evolved form, Eevee, can be found in Celadon City. Nevertheless, Espeon was ultimately replaced by Lapras in the remakes, possibly to round out Red's team with exclusively first-generation Pokémon. However, fans have recently found evidence that Red may have been planned to have a bigger role in the second-gen games. This evidence comes from an early prototype build of Pokémon Gold and Silver, known as the Space World 1997 demo. This prototype of Gold and Silver was showcased back at Nintendo's 1997 Space World trade show, a full two years before the game's initial release. Although the demo was thought to be lost for over two decades, on May 26, 2018, an anonymous user uploaded it to the Pokémon Reverse Engineering Tools Discord channel. Thanks to the efforts of a dedicated fan group known as Team Spaceworld, the demo's long-hidden secrets have been revealed. 
Among them is the discovery that players can't name their character in the demo, and instead, the trainer is always named Satoshi, Red's canon name at the time. While this could suggest that the main character of Pokemon Gold and Silver was originally intended to be the same trainer from the first generation games, Team Space World has found evidence to the contrary. It turns out that the Space World 1997 demo was a carefully curated slice of the game that included many aspects that were touched up or completely altered specifically for the show. Show. However, by editing a single byte of the game's ROM, it's possible to see the actual build of Pokemon Gold and Silver Game Freak had at that time, pulling back the curtains on even more surprises. Did You Know Gaming reached out to Samuel Obscure Mesner, one of Team Space World's leading hackers and translators, for an explanation. Mesner stated, The fact that the player can't name their character was thrown together specifically for the Space World demo. If you disable demo mode, you get to name your trainer as usual. The default names you can choose from for the player are Gold, Satoshi, and Jack. And for the rival, they are Silver, Shigeru, and John. My educated guess for why they chose Satoshi and Shigeru for the demo is that they wanted to ride the hype of the anime, which had been airing for a few months at the time. On top of that, there's definite evidence that the player character in the early Gen 2 wasn't meant to be the same trainer as in Gen 1. This evidence can be found when the ROM is edited. When players walk into the tall grass at the start of the game, they are stopped by their rival, Blue, and taken back to the lab. After the player receives their starter Pokémon, Blue hands them a Pokédex, saying, I used to want to be the world's best Pokémon trainer. When I got too arrogant, there was one who showed me humility. Somehow, you remind me of him. Thanks to him, I was able to mend my ways. If that isn't enough, a debug mode can be accessed in the Space World 1997 demo by pressing Select on the title screen. This debug mode includes a number of unique differences that set it apart from the other versions of the demo. The player's default name is set as Koji, whereas their rival's name is Red. This may be in reference to Koji Nishino, a designer at Game Freak, who was also the inspiration for the Pokémon Snorlax. Mesner told us this could mean that, at an even earlier stage in Pokémon Gold and Silver's development, Red was slated to be the rival. However, it's more likely that the programmers just chose some arbitrary names. Secrets have also been found in the debug modes of other Pokémon games too even those that reach store shelves. For example, the debug mode of the English versions of Pokémon Red, Blue, and Yellow changes the player's default name to Ninten and the rival's name to Sony, a reference to Nintendo's bitter rivalry with Sony's PlayStation at the time. Those aren't the only hidden player names in the original Japanese games. When debug mode is enabled in Pokémon Red and Green versions, the player is named Yamaguchi. This pays homage to Wataru Yamaguchi, who received a special thank you in the game's credits. Meanwhile, the player's rival is named Ishihara, referencing Sunikazu Ishihara, who is now the president of the Pokémon Company. In the Japanese Blue, the player is named Gefuri, an abbreviated play on Game Freak, and the rival is called Kuricha, a nod to the game's co-developers, Creatures Inc. Red's reputation as a silent protagonist has become something of a staple within the series, often only responding with ellipses when spoken to in encounters from the second-gen games and onwards. Despite this, there's evidence that Red has in fact spoken in a Pokémon game before. One example of this can be found in the original games in Saffron City, where the player meets a character known as Copycat. Speaking to Copycat reveals a peculiar conversation, where Red says, Hi, do you like Pokémon? Uh, no, I just asked you. Huh? You're strange. Then, the copycat says, Hmm? Quit mimicking? But that's my favorite hobby. The distinction between the player character's dialogue and copycat's indicates that Red did indeed speak. Moreover, copycat needs something to mimic in the first place. With tens of thousands of gaming accounts being hacked every month and people falling victim to credit card fraud, online security is a real concern. To lower the risk of having your credit card information or private data stolen by hackers, you should consider using ExpressVPN. VPNs stop phone and internet providers, advertisers, and hackers from tracking your net browsing data at home or over public Wi-Fi. If you're making purchases online with a credit card, that information is at risk without a VPN. VPNs also mask your IP 
IP address, allowing you to access content that's restricted from your region. Did you know gaming have used ExpressVPN to access videos and other content that was restricted by country for research, and can attest to its utility? ExpressVPN is easy to set up, connects with a single click, and never logs your activity. ExpressVPN has 24-7 customer support, is consistently faster than other VPN providers, and was even rated the number one VPN by TechRadar. As well as having apps for desktop and mobile devices, ExpressVPN also has a router app that protects every device on your network. ExpressVPN also has browser extensions for both Chrome and Firefox. ExpressVPN is less than $7 a month and comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can take back your internet privacy today and find out how to get three months of ExpressVPN for free by clicking the link in the description or going to expressvpn.com slash dykg. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash dykg for three months free with a one-year package. Package. Visit the link in the description to learn more. And thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Special thanks to the work of Pokemon fans at the cutting room floor, Bulbapedia, Team Space World, and thanks to Samuel Obscure Mesner for help making this episode possible. If you want more Pokemon, check out the latest session of Madness, or if you want more trivia, check out the Digino Gaming video on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate.